All right, let's, uh, we're gonna do a little experiment here first, because that's what we do. My nice hot hide glue. I'm looking at ways to get the glue actually in this little crack because our crack, because of the wonderful job we have done hydrating the crack, it is darn near impossible to get anything in there. This, do I even think this is going to work? I don't. Um, but you know what? I got it laying around. And that's kind of what I thought. Okay. Tiny bit in there. I don't know that that's going to do what we need it to do. Well, that um, surprises the dog snot out of me. I really didn't think that that was going to fly. So, we've got a way, trying to flush the glue out of this, we've got a way to get at least some glue down in there to hold that together because we're swollen up nice and tight. Now I have um, popped it. I have. Um, I've heated this wood up so that uh, with a heating pad so I mean it's you know 80 or 90 degrees so hopefully that will extend my working time even just a little bit all right here we go kids my other little toy that I was playing with here I don't have a suction cup anywhere but I've got this is just a eraser a rubber cap eraser and I totally stole that from Shardiger totally stole this idea from uh, oh is it Jerry you know Rosa Stringworks guy I had this great idea for this kind of a call clamping dealio Now I tried, um, I can't use a, 
I can't use a band clamp because I got the top of it off and it tends to it tends to collapse it in and that'll help if I break that off and hit myself in the face with it and now I'm gonna put our call in right there where our cleat is gonna go right there to hopefully stop the nasty spreading of that particular crack clamped clamped and clamped now we'll let it sit and uh, see what happens all right here we are back some time later let's take a uh, look see at this Okay, one of our unintended consequences, not that it's a bad one, but looky here, kids. This is just lightly moistened, and I mean lightly, lightly, and I'm not rubbing real hard. That looks a little better. All right, there's that, and we're gonna let that sit until tomorrow. Hey, welcome back. I've done a test, kind of a test, a test clamping, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, first of all, I've just been using a, uh, a razor blade and an X-Acto blade and trying to scrape um, a lot of the wood and there's some glue and there's some paint um, that are all up on the top. Um, so this is just, like I said, this is just kind of a test clamping here um, on the back side. Now these are these are my El Cheapo homemade um, bridge clamps um, that I made. Now they have. They have flex in them, which is why you can see this kind of weird skewed angle here. Um, but then we're kind of doing something that we're really not designed for. Um, because you don't need a whole ton of clamping pressure to put a bridge down, but we're having to use a whole ton of pressure to try to flatten this out. Now I'm just using this with the with just this wooden call to um, see if I can't kind of pre-position the uh, the wood into place. There are two areas there that were um, that were just kind of pushed up or pulled up I should say. Well not level. We'll just go with that. actually did push in a little bit it's not spectacular but it's a lot it's a lot less angular than it was before so now our uh, our treatment of choice is going to be to uh, lightly lightly moisten this part up lightly moisten the back up and then give them the big squeezy squeezy with the clamps. Now the downside of trying to do the squeezy squeezy with the clamps is um, the holes are not where they should be. Does that get in here? Let's see if we can't pick that up. You see we've got some sort of angulation going on there because the holes aren't exactly where they need to be which is somewhat irritating um, so more than likely that was me not getting the measurement off of this correctly um, but also 
that's me. So I gotta figure out how to do that. Or do I do I just go with one hole, with one centering hole? Thanks, I could probably just go with one. It would be okay. Because the purpose of this was just so that I get my clamps over the same area. So if I do that, So that's just the it's just the quick update. Life is in the way again today, so I've uh, I was just able to get this in here and give you a better shot of the scrapings that we did today. Get it scraped a little better. Um, and it's just trying to get the trying to get that off of there. Now the other thing that I have contemplated doing, um, and I'm not sure if I'm just killing myself by doing this or not, is um, I'm wondering if because I have this break across here, let's use this, this is fractured across this point, this is fractured up this direction, this one is fractured and blown out this way, crack here, crack here, I've got a crack starting to radiate this direction. I'm wondering if at least here, here, and here, if I drill them out and dowel them. If I just replace them with hardwood dowels. Um, and then, got my, my man strap falling off. Um, I'm wondering if that might be the way to go. Um, so actually I'm gonna combine yesterday's work with today's work and we're gonna leave it there and I'm gonna sit and wait for comments. So that's the comment. If I am if I am taking the, um, the base uh, E string, the D string and the G string holes and drilling those out and replacing them with the hardwood dowel. Um, I think I've got some cherry sitting around um, just something to lend some structural integrity to that particular area because as you can see here's here's the areas I'm talking about crack although it's glued and cleated and then there will also be a bridge um, where is it did I bring it down here hey let's have a senior moment here go back up to the garage and with my uh, brocolated knee not so easy so here at the moment is what I'm thinking about um, this is African mahogany and that is what I'm thinking of doing for the replacement bridge which would actually be like that I think that's what we're going to do. So this in concert with a good old doweling here, here, and here would hopefully restore the structural integrity for what we may end up calling the donkey fart guitar because um, you guys are funny. Uh, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, talk to me. Um, totally realizing that this is an exercise in figuring things out, gaining experience with different repair methods, uh, different theories of reinforcement, knowing good and well this is not going to be the most amazing sounding guitar in the world, but it's something that I am looking at as a learning experience. So I think that's talk to me. Have a good weekend. Cheers.
If you liked this episode of Rattle Can Guitar Restorations, consider watching one of the videos listed below. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you'd like to support the channel, head on over to our Patreon page. You can also friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, as well as the Twitter. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Cheers.